simple tractor. Uh, you started out with uh, two Ford nine inch pickup truck rear ends from back in the 70s, like F-150s. And uh, I narrowed them up, cut about a foot out of each side and uh, welded the housings back together and welded the axles together. And uh, I put new seals in it and I changed the ratios in them. They're like a six, six to one ratio to get a lower speed out of it. And then I got uh, the uh, drive system is in the back here. And there's a chain case down in here. You can see it right in here. That's a reduction case there. Okay, there's a uh, 60H sprocket on there with chain that runs in oil. There's the pinion shaft over there, and that is actually an output shaft from a Ford three-speed transmission out of a pickup truck. And you can probably get a little picture of it from the back on the other side there. Like right down in here, you can kind of see the top of the transmission. That's so just a simple oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Ford three-speed. And then in the, on the input side of it here, there's another chain case. And inside there, that's got number 50H drive chain, which runs in oil. And there's a pilot bearing here, ball bearing, to support the end of the shaft. And then it runs through on the other side here. There's a, it's kind of hard to see it, but there's a Cessna hydraulic motor down there. And it has a variable pitch uh, swash plate in it. These are not real common, but they're a real nice thing to have. It can give you almost like an overdrive gear. And the dri what drives that on the back of the engine, let me open the hood here and we'll get a look at this. This is a Kubota V1903. It's about 42 horse diesel. It was a power unit and uh, I just took off everything I didn't need. And it has a standard KT bell housing, which is a smaller bell housing, and it's set up to bolt a hydraulic pump directly to it. There's a spline shaft in there that, uh, with a hub on the flywheel. That's an 18 series Sunstrand hydrostatic uh, pump. And on the, on the end of the pump, it has an auxiliary pump. You can see it right out here. This auxiliary pump, it pushes right around eight gallons a minute at uh, say 2800 RPM. That supplies all the hydraulic power to the tractor for your steering. You got two steering cylinders on here. And I use two steering cylinders, by the way, because there's other companies out there that I've seen, they only use one. And what that does is it makes the tractor steer faster one direction than it does the other. So two cylinders equalize the steering speed in both directions. And they have spherical ends on them for any misalignment. And there's an orbital steering valve inside this case here. It's just, all it is is just a, a valve that controls volume and pressure to the cylinders from the pump. And it's just real simple. And underneath the floor pan here is there's directional valves, which these handles are hooked to for raising and lowering the three-point hitch on there, running the top link cylinder, and running the auxiliary ports over there. So you got all kinds of extra hydraulics on this thing. Uh, the power takeoff, I think you noticed the shaft around the front when you were in front of it. That's just a standard uh, inch and three-eighth six-blind agricultural power takeoff that runs anywhere between 500 and 750 RPM based on however fast you're running your engine. So you can run, you know, if you want to put a brush hog on it or whatever, anything power takeoff drive, you can run with this. And also the controls here. Uh, I mentioned the hydraulic controls here. This is the forward reverse speed control. Now I made it with a pedal and with a handle for basically ease of operation. If you need both hands for something, you use your foot. If you, you got one free hand, you can use this. Or if you want to move the tractor a little bit, if you're standing next to it to hook something up, you know, uh, you can do that. Uh, speed control, engine stop, start, glow plugs, all right there, real simple. Um, Let's see, the, uh, if we walk around the other side, the, I can show you the range transmission is operated through these two levers here that shifts uh, low and then medium and high, it's up and down. And they're on universal joints and linkages because the rear, the rear axle of this tractor is mounted on a basically what I call an undercarriage and it pivots this way for when you're going over uneven ground because the articulation joint on this tractor is straight up and down, okay? There's, there's double ball bearings in each top and the bottom in there, okay? So there's no twisting there. The twisting is done at the back axle. And it's, it's better that way for what I use it for. Um, 
you don't have the sensation that you're going to tip over when you're going over uneven ground. You can get a pretty good picture of that to see. While you're down there, the, uh, the power takeoff shaft you saw up front is driven off the front of the engine here through this reduction case. Now this is a chain drive case, the chain's running oil, it's 60 uh, gauge uh, heavy duty chain, and there's uh, ball bearing idlers in there to reverse the rotation of the, of the engine crankshaft because they had to run the other way. And then the whole gearbox is on a pivot on the bearings, and that's what tightens and loosens the belt to drive it. Oh, yeah, real simple. And it's a twin belt drive, so they don't slip. I mean, you can stall the engine with it. And as far as uh, the cooling is concerned, it's a standard radiator that came with the engine. And this is an oil cooler. I hooked up two of them, or two engine oil coolers, and I hooked them together for the hydraulic system on this because of the volume that's going through that pump. I ran a double set of lines on here so we we're not cooking the oil going through the lines. It's all pretty simple. Uh, I built this tractor back in 2012 and I've never broken anything on it, never had any problems with it. And uh, I've used it pretty hard. I've got a lot of different attachments I put on it and uh, it does what I need it to do. So it's uh, one of a kind, I guess. Well, let's go ahead and start it up see it run. Okay. Got to hit the glow plugs for a minute here. Tight of a circle can it make? Talk about the parking brake. 
Yeah, we can save it. Talk about that. Let me shut it off here. It's got a parking brake on here. It wasn't in my description, but uh, it's just an internal linkage and goes down. It's got a disc on the front pinion shaft on the differential, just a disc, probably about 10 inches in diameter. And it's got a, a caliper that I used off of a Cub Cadet garden tractor. It's got the two brake pads in it. And there's, a, there's an adjustment in here so you can tighten up the tension. But I mean, when that's, when that's locked like that, I mean, it, it's planted. It ain't gonna go anywhere. So I figured for safety reasons, I wanted to have some kind of parking brake on it.